The objective of this lesson is to have a map chart that will show me bubbles for sales and that will adjust based on the drop down menu. So, for example, when I select carrot or banana, the highest value will be highlighted in red and everything will auto update. How to do this? We're going to start with our raw data that you can see here. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to insert a bubble chart. So now I'm selecting this data to insert the bubble chart, but afterwards I'm going to refer the bubble chart to some other created data. So we select it, we go insert, we click here, use this one, bubble chart. This one has an X axis, a Y axis, and then the size of the bubble will change based on your variable. So for example, if you have high sales, it will be a big bubble. Lower sales, it will be a smaller bubble. Next, we're gonna move this down a little bit, and then we're gonna click on region, press delete, and then the region is gone. Next, we want to put a picture behind this. So we click on our plot area, right click, format plot area. We have the bucket. Under bucket, you have picture or texture fill. You click on it, then you have insert, and you have three options, either from a file or stock image where you have to pay, I think, and then online picture. So I'm gonna use online picture, and then I'm gonna go here and write word map. As you can see, I get some pictures from word maps, and then I'm gonna select one of them. So make sure that you select one and you check whether it's copyright free. Usually those are copyright free, but you just want to make sure that you are fine. So for example, I'm gonna select this one. I'm gonna say, okay. And then as you can see, I get my word map. Then what we're gonna do is the following. A bubble chart, as I said, has an X axis and a Y axis. So it's like positioning of the data or the bubble. So for example, if I want a bubble to be here, I'm gonna have 0 0.6 and then here maybe 0 0.2 or whatever it is. But I'm gonna fix first the axis. So here I have an axis that goes from minus 0.2 to one. I don't want this. So I right click, then I go format axis, and I go here and I put zero and then 10. This is arbitrary. It's just the scale I'm gonna use. So here you can see that there is this reset button. It means that you have set this manually. We're gonna do the same for the other axis. So we go here, we click, Access options, we do zero, and then we do 10. As you can see, now we have a fixed access. So for example, if I want to put a bubble for North America, it will be a Y of seven, it's here, and then an X of two. So let's create this. We're gonna do X, Y, and then sales. So sales, I'm gonna put one, 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 one for now, and then we'll see what to do with it, we'll fill it. And then I need to get my regions. So my regions are here. I'm just gonna copy them and paste them here. We remove this one. Then we just format this table quickly and we start. So we're gonna start putting the bubbles. North America will be at what? We do two X and seven Y. So we put two X, seven Y. Then South America, South America, I want it here. So I have 3x and then 3y, right, here. So I'm going to put 3 and 3. Australia, Australia, you have 3y and then 8x. So we're going to say 8x, 3y. Europe, it's here, right? So 7y and 5x, so 5, 7. And then Asia, let's put it here. So we have 7 and 7. Next, we want those bubbles not to come from here, but to come from this table. So we select here our area. We right click, select data, and we remove everything. We start from scratch. We add a series, add series name. Let's call it sales. Then X value, we select our X values. Y values, we select our Y values. And then the bubble size will be my sales. Now they'll be the same size because I have one, 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 one. And I say, okay, if you click, you can see that you have your bubbles here, right? Next, what we're gonna do is fix a little bit the bubble. So we click on them, 
the first thing we do, we add data labels. And two, the bubbles are a bit too big, right? So I'm going to click on them, right click, format data series, and I have width of bubble, and I can scale it. So for example, instead of 100, we're going to put 60. And as you can see, the bubbles now are smaller. Now you click on this, you go up under home, and you make it white, so the text is now visible. We can also click on it and click on bold, so the text is bolded. So that's already good. Next, we need to get the sales numbers here, right? So how do we get the sales number? First, we need to look at a few things. Number one, we need to make a drop-down menu because if I select, for example, carrot, I want the sales of carrot for North America, South America, Australia, Europe, etc. If I select banana, the numbers we should update for banana, right? So we're going to do a drop-down. First, we take all our fruits. We paste them, let's say here. Then we go to data, remove duplicates, column P, we remove duplicates. We have three fruits, as you can see. Next, we're going to do a drop-down menu. So we say select value or select. Then we put a border and then we can color this cell, for example, in gray. And we need to add a list. So we do data, data validation. We click here. Instead of any value, you select list. You click on this and you select your list from here. And as you can see, now I have a list. So I can select, for example, carrot. Now to get your sales, it will be North America and carrot. So what do I use for this? Sum ifs formula. So if you don't know the sum ifs formula very well, I'm going to put a link in the description so you can go to this lesson. We're going to do equal sum ifs. What is my sum range? It's my sales, right? And since I'm going to drag this formula down, I'm going to go here, press F4 to have the dollar sign. And here also F4 dollar sign. First criteria range. The first criteria range, let's start with what is selected here, carrot. So this is here. Again, we're going to use F4 and F4. Then what is the criteria one? It's actually what got selected in the dropdown. Again, for the dropdown, we should use the dollar sign. Then criteria range two, it's my region, right? Again, I'm going to use F4 for my region. And then my criteria is this here, this cell. Now this one, I don't need to use F4 because I'm going to drag this down. So I need to get the different regions or the different continents. Then I close my parentheses, enter. And as you can see, if I just format this, I go on home, then I click on this and click on this. It's 2,539. So carrot North America, carrot North America, 2,539. Right? If I change it to Apple, it's 5756, which is this one. Right? So now we drag the formula down. Now, if you look at my graph, I did not get those numbers. What am I getting? I'm getting those numbers, actually, the Y value. So I can click here. I can right click, format data labels. And then instead of Y value here, I can say I want the bubble size. Once you do this, you can see that the bubble size is actually my sales. Then I want to get rid of those axes, grid lines, etc. So I click on my first axis, press delete on the keyboard. Same for my axis down. For my grid line, same thing. I click on my grid lines and they are gone. So here you go. The next thing we need to do is we need to highlight in red the biggest value. So to do this, what are we going to do? we're going to add another series that will come on top of those bubbles and only the data which is the maximum will be highlighted the rest will be blank so then you will see what is behind which is this numbers so let's add let's add highest what are we going to do we're going to do an if formula if this value is equal to max of this range then you close the parentheses, you use F4 because you're going to drag the formula. If it's the case, then I will take the value. Otherwise, 
I want a blank cell and double quotation mark two times means a blank cell so for example 5000 is not the highest right so it's 8000 the highest so now if I drag my formula you can see that 8000 is the one that is highlighted if I select another fruit carrot you see it's 7000 now we're going to format this so we select this we use the format painter we click here and then we format the border so now let's add this to our chart we right click here select data add series name we can go and select this highest then my x value will be the same because I want to add bubbles on top of bubbles right and here I'll get only one bubble then my y value is this then my size will be not the sales it will be the highest and then you say okay and then you say okay and as you can see I get a red bubble on top of this if I select something else apple for example the biggest is this one so the red bubble comes here and so on so this is how you can make an interactive map chart in Excel.